Welcome to Des Moines, Iowa, the conclusion of the High V Classic in the great state of Iowa across the river, Wells Fargo Arena. That's where we are today as the 22nd ranked Iowa Hawkeyes play against Northern Iowa Big Ten basketball presented by Jeep. And welcome to Courtside, everybody, along with Sean Morris, Jeff Levering with you. And this is such a big game for the state. We saw Iowa State play against Drake earlier today. Iowa State came up victorious. But this is such a great tournament for the state of Iowa. Yeah, it really is for the game of college basketball in general, but in particular for these four programs in the state. Now, Drake and you and I play each other because they're in the same conference in the Missouri Valley, but it's a great opportunity to bring college basketball into the state capital. For the 22nd-ranked Hawkeyes, Tyler Cook has taken his game to another level. He's averaging a double-double over his last couple of contests and he's in the top 10 in the conference in scoring rebounding and field goal percentage and his last outing versus in-state Iowa State did nothing to hurt those averages 11 rebounds to go along with 26 points and of those 11 carom seven on the offensive end so if you are the Northern Iowa Panthers you have to make a concerted effort to make sure that you find him when the ball is in flight put a body on it because so many times he's the most dangerous when the ball is out of his hands and on the backboard one of the best dunkers in all of of college basketball and, and for you and especially for the folks in Iowa you want to see that steady improvement and he has done just that over his three years in Iowa City. He's improved not just in terms of those statistics but also his efficiency especially shooting the basketball has become a better foul shooter although he still wants to continue to improve in that area. Take a look at our starting lineups. They are presented by Jeep as well. You see the starting five for the Hawkeyes. For Northern Iowa, they're led by one of their freshmen, A.J. Green. A.J. Green, really a highly touted recruit coming out of the Cedar Falls area, leads this team in scoring as a true freshman. There are a lot of connections between these two teams. A.J. Green was an AAU teammate of Joe Wieskamp of Iowa since sixth grade. Those are two very talented freshmen that are going to be going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And don't forget about Jordan Bohannon. He had his senior season in high school ended on a game-winning shot by A.J. Green as well. The two haven't talked since. So the rivalry not only goes deep with the universities, but within the state and the high school levels as well. And another connection would be why Wyatt Lowhouse coming back from an injury, really playing well for the Northern Iowa Panthers. His dad, Brad, was an Iowa Hawkeye during his time in college. Lowhouse, one of a couple of seniors. This Northern Iowa team, they're going to be tested depth-wise today, especially in the front court. We had an opportunity to talk with Ben Jacobson, the head coach of Northern Iowa today during shoot-around. That's certainly an area of concern for the Panthers coming into this one tonight. Especially in terms of making sure they take away that inside presence of Tyler Cook, not just in the half-court set, but he emphasized, Jeff, the importance of getting back in transition and not allowing him to set up shots. And if he does catch the ball down there on the block, look for the Panthers to rotate a bunch of different defenders coming at him with double teams. Not necessarily a steady diet of it, but coming from different angles to get the ball out of his hands. Fran McCaffrey in his ninth season in Iowa City, he has had some great teams. This among them, again, 22nd ranked in the country coming into this contest here tonight. And for Fran today, again, this is the last time that they're playing this high V Classic with the 22 guaranteed games within the conference. It's going to be difficult to continue this this rivalry between Northern Iowa, but at the same time, he he really cherishes this matchup against his in-state rival. Yeah, and this is, a, you mentioned it, going to the expanded 20-game conference slate is you know, something that has really made what was already a difficult procedure, that being scheduling, even more difficult. What do you have to back out of? What do you have to put forth? Because if you're a Big Ten team now, in addition to the extended 20 games, you also have a Gavit Games and a Big Ten ACC Challenge already put in there for you. Iowa wearing the road black uniforms today. You and I in the whites with the purple trim. And Tyler Cook and company going to work early on the Panthers. Isaiah Moss in there as a starter yet again. And Tyler Cook trying to find Garza down low. Luca Garza with a right hand opening but the bottom. Offensive rebound, a foul, and Wieskamp is going to have an opportunity to three-point play. Really good job defensively initially by the Panthers, kind of forcing a difficult shot, but then they didn't complete the play. I think as the ball spun around, Jeff, what happened is that Northern Iowa mistimed their jump. They don't put a body on Wieskamp, who's able to come from that elbow extended all the way to the basket to clean up the mess. Wieskamp having an outstanding freshman season, misses from the free throw line. Foul went on Wyatt Lowhouse, his first. Wieskamp, you can never change the guy's look on his face. It's always the same whether he's going well or not going well. 
Well, Hannon nearly forces steal. He's on A.J. Green early in this one. Little help from Garza. Eight to shoot for you and I. Brown with Garza. And Isaiah Brown couldn't finish. And it should be a shot clock violation, and it will be. Nice initial defensive stance by the Iowa Hawkeyes. You mentioned it earlier, the deflection by Bohan and kind of disrupted the offensive flow. And then with the exception of that last dribble drive, kind of out of uh, desperation, they were able to keep Northern Iowa almost exclusively on the right side of the floor. It's something to watch over the course of this game too, Sean. You've seen it, the improvement defensively by Iowa this year. They've made a concerted effort over the last couple of seasons. Their defensive metrics have not been great as the three is down by Wyatt Lowhouse. And this is a team in Northern Iowa that's not necessarily proficient from behind the arc. Only 30% is a squad on the year. Garza trying to answer, and he does. Luka Garza showing his range. He's such a tough matchup because he's a strong physical kick can score around the basket, then he can also pull you up. And the other thing that makes him so difficult to defend, Jeff, he's not just a capable but a willing passer out of the double team. Garza's had a tough, tough couple of games and a travel on UNI turnover. And Garza with just four points his last time out. I'm willing to cut the kid some slack because he had a cyst removed from his abdomen in the offseason. Now, that's not like going to supercuts and getting, you know, your hair trimmed. That's toughness to come back from that. Garza, a talented freshman a year ago. Really gritted his teeth on a tough Iowa team. There's that double team. You see, nice job by that double team. You took Cook out of the scoring area. Trying to go down low and utilize his size. Now six to shoot for Iowa. Garza, open look. And he's off the mark on that shot. And for the folks watching at home, Jeff, as you see as we come down and transition this way, there are three three-point lines. The college line is the middle line. An arena that has a G League team affiliated with the Timberwolves. There's Burhau. Burhau too strong on his first shot of the day. College line, of course, and then the women's and high school line right at the top of the key. When you have an arena like this, it looks like Saturn. <laughs> Throw a couple of volleyball lines on there, then we'd really have some fun. Tyler Cook, good shot from the baseline. Good job by Cook of understanding with that little inside pivot, the defender has a decision to make. If he comes at him, Cook has the ability to put the ball on the floor. If he backs off, Cook shows you the versatility to knock down that mid-range jump shot. Los Fargo Arena. Been here a while and a very, very good facility. They're going to host a regional this year in the NCAA tournament. Did it a couple of years ago as well. There's A.J. Green. Too strong on his first shot of the evening. And a good job of forcing a difficult shot by Ivy. Tyler Cook underneath on the drive. Thought he got fouled. Instead, he gets the bucket anyway. Tyler Cook in that speed. It's a 7-0 run right now. And a foul underneath. It'll go on McDonald. Another turnover. And another look at Tyler Cook. Nice job of facing up. The defender hand down. Doesn't close out. Cook shows the ability. And what that does is it sets up in transition his ability to get to the rim and complete. Just a rare breakdown in defensive transition by Northern Iowa. You have to stop the ball first and get the ball out of the hands of the ball handler, especially when it's a guy like Tyler Cook. Big improvement from last year to this year, his ball handling skills. Taking a little dive into what could have been in the NBA draft. Isaiah Moss with a nice move. Moss couldn't finish it off, though. And Cook has really improved his skills from what he learned from going into those camps and talking to pro scouts and other coaches. A turnover forced by Iowa. Really difficult entry feed. Nice job of team defense by the Hawkeyes. Find the open man. Wees camp for three. Wees camp. And a great start for the Hawkeyes. We talked about Garza as a passer. He had a decent shot, Jeff, but he gave it up for a better one to Wieskamp on the side, something you don't always see from a big guy. It's a 10-0 run in just under three minutes of action. Starting to see some subs for Northern Iowa. Taiwan Pickford on the floor. He's been battling some injuries early on in the season. Still getting his feet underneath him. There's a drive, a tough shot. It will be a block. And Spencer Haldeman will go to the line. And Joe Wieskamp 
And the high guys off to a great start. Nice shot by Garza. He knocked down the three. That makes the opportunity available for the freshman on the wing. Presented by Jeep. Hurry in for great deals at the Jeep Big Finish Sales Event. And brought to you by State Farm. Here to help life go right, talk to a State Farm agent today. You can see the growth of this Iowa team. Nicholas Bear a couple of shots ago. He is now a senior on this team. And what a great tournament this has been over the last few years since 2011. So ben Jacobson and Fran McCaffrey, the last year of this High V Classic between the four big schools in the state of Iowa. Alderman in the line and makes his first of two. And Iowa has to be really pleased, Jeff, with their defensive performance in the first four plus minutes of clock time. Prior to this, they'd held the Panthers to one main field goal, one of four from the floor, but most importantly, turned over UNI four times. I mentioned the defensive presence that Iowa has brought to the center stage in New York City during the 2K Classic. They won that tournament, beating Oregon and UConn. Moss trying to drive, and Tyler Cook fouled on his way up. He'll shoot a couple. Well, Iowa 7-2 coming in on the season. Their two losses have been conference losses. And when you start your conference season in December, you're starting to get yourself ready to go. And for that matter, November 30th against Wisconsin. Ended up losing that ball game at home. A really good contest. And then Michigan State going to East Lansing. No easy first two games, especially early on in the season. Especially with the post presence put up by those respective squads. And it was reflected. You talked about Oregon and UConn. Look at the winning scores. And most importantly, look at the scores they gave up defensively. 69 and 72, which is a number of points below their season average, giving up about 75. But against Wisconsin and Michigan State, the post presence of Ethan Happ and then that front line of Michigan State points in the paint, really a big difference in those ball games. 38 points in the paint for the Wisconsin Badgers, 48 put up by the Spartans. Iowa's got some good length down low with Garza and Cook and Cleaner. Nicholas Bear can become a presence down there as well for them. This is a game against Northern Iowa, though, where they start four guards, in essence, and their size is not as prevalent. They should dominate in the painted area. They've also switched up things defensively. And a good job by Northern Iowa of eventually <laughs> recognizing that. And Goldman steps right in the gut of the defense and knocks it down. Shandon Goldman just onto the floor for the first time, the junior. Ball handed underneath to Garza. Garza trying to go up and under, and Garza finishes. If he's shown you his versatility, the ability to knock down the standstill jump shot, the good ball reversal to Wieskamp for the three in the corner. And here, if you don't close off the baseline, he's nimble enough. If you don't put that inside foot over the baseline, he'll make you pay. Already six points in the paint for Iowa. And Bo Hannon doing a nice job on A.J. Green. Open three. Holland couldn't get it. Garza with the board. But you can live with that shot if you're more than Iowa. It came off a ball reversal, just not able to knock it down. Iowa has made four of their last five shots, and it's going to be off of Wee's camp and going to the Panthers. A rare turnover for Iowa in the early going. Just their second. Mention the lack of size. Austin Fife injured for UNI. A big loss for Northern Iowa. An offensive rebound. Dahl up, couldn't finish. A shame because Dahl did his work early. He got the inside position, got Garza on his back, just not able to convert. And Dahl has been out with some injuries as well. Open look, Paul Hannon. He is yet to really have that standout game this year, Sean. This might be a nice time to have it. And how about the five-point swing right there? The two that you and I least wanting around the basket leads to a three on the other end. Underneath now the open look from three to strong Moss with the rebound. That three by Bohannon, by the way, the 200th of his career, seventh player in school history to accomplish that feat. Inside Garza. Got too far underneath that hoop. Didn't have his feet under him and tried to shoot it before he was able to kind of get his feet underneath the base and go up strong. Tough move underneath and a blocking foul. They'll get Bo Hannon. We'll go back to his 200 three-pointer of his career. And it starts with dribble penetration, 
And you saw outside the ring, you got, Iowa did a really good job on that secondary break of spreading out Northern Iowa defensively. That led to the dribble drive, the utilization of the jump stop, the slide to the side to avoid the charge, and then you kick it to Bohannon in the corner. Nice job all around in transition offense by the Hawkeyes. And you mentioned the size, too, that Ben Jacobson was talking about. You saw three players converging on the title and cook. Lots of open options. Iowa again utilizing zone defense here. Burhau off the mark again. Burhau the transfer from Pepperdine coming off a solid year out there in Malibu where he shot 40% from behind the arc. Native of Minnesota was a finalist, Mr. Basketball in Minnesota a couple of years ago. Well, Hannah looking for some space around Brown. There's Creamer. Back inside the Creamer. McDonald all over. McDonald doing a nice job and a walk. Really nice job by Luke McDonald down low. Good job of forcing Creener to put the ball on the floor. And then what you saw McConnell do was maintain verticality. He didn't go for the up and under. That led to the turnover. Nice job by the big McDonald for the Panthers. So Tyler Cook just moments ago slapped his hands on the floor defensively. Low house. And another miss and push by Creener underneath. McDonald had position again. Iowa up 18 to 7 at the moment. You and I a little chilly from the perimeter, but they're still hanging tough for the Hawkeyes. An 11 point lead for the 22nd ranked Hawkeyes, 7 of 11 from the floor so far. And let's go to school with Professor Morris. Well, Tyler Cook had shown the ability to get in the lane. Now, watch what he does. He's gotten in the lane a few years in possession and scored. Now, because he's in the open floor, and Iowa had done a nice job of spacing the floor, three Panthers converge. That leads to the kick out to Jordan Bohannon in the corner. And if I were in charge of anything in academia, whatever institution that I was involved with should have their credentials pulled. <laughs> I don't know. I'd take your class. That was great. Yeah, that was a nice circle, wasn't it? Yeah, good visual aids. Yeah. That's all I need. That's okay. That's an A. I would, okay, definitely, yeah. I would definitely audit that class. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd get audited. <laughs> Nine to shoot for you and I. Good crossover by Brown, nearly threw it away, and still very cold on the Panthers. They are just 2 for 12 from the floor so far. And Jeff Burhau wasn't able to get in rhythm to shoot that because the pass was behind him. It didn't lead him into the shot. Burhau had to make a pretty athletic play just to catch it before he went into a shooting motion. Ron McCaffrey, Nicholas Bear on the floor for the first time for Iowa. Well, Hannon splits the defense, leans in, couldn't get it. And a nice block out right there by McDonald on Cook, taking away the offensive rebounding opportunity. And another turnover by UNI. That is number five. Walk. And Tyler Cook caught the basketball, took a couple of extra steps. Costly turnovers. Macy Daly will check in for Iowa. And going back to Cook. Catch. Yep. yep. No question about it. And the thing is, is that you notice what Cook was doing there. He was standing straight up. You have to be in a basketball position because he caught the ball straight up with his legs locked. And in order to get into a basketball position, he had to shuffle his feet. Cook has played so many minutes this year for Iowa as well. He barely comes off the floor. Closed out nicely on Brown. Green with Creener on him. More size underneath. Nice. Great pass. And a block by Bear. Bear loves this stage. Yeah, and if you're McDonald there, you have to put your shoulder to the rim, Jeff. You have to make the defender come through you. McDonald didn't do that. Nice job of bailing out. Now watch the touch pass. Now you have to put your shoulder right to the rim. If you put your shoulder to the rim, then Nicholas Bear has no choice but to come through you. But you put the ball right out there where Bear can utilize his length. You have to put the shoulder to the rim and force the defender to come through you. You and I has now missed their last eight shots. Their last bucket came just under 15 minutes in this first half as Cook knocks down the first. We mentioned Nicholas Bear. He is an Iowa native. He has enjoyed the Hy-Vee Classic, averaging a double-double, plus three assists, three blocks, and two steals a game. And a couple seasons ago was the sixth man of the year in the Big Ten Conference and so versatile. 
can run the floor, can knock down the three if left unattended, but you really see his ability on that end of the floor, meaning the defensive end of the floor, Jeff, his ability to come over and eliminate mistakes with a block shot or to guard multiple positions. He's so long and rangy. Big time wingspan, he can get up very quickly. You saw it on that block shot as well. And he's drawing the toughest defensive assignment with the freshman green here. Altered that shot and Green couldn't make it. Another miss by UNI. 20 to 7, Iowa. McCaffrey trying to facilitate. Greener looking for some help with Green on him. That is a matchup that they can exploit. Really good spacing by Iowa on this end of the floor. And she daily. Eight to shoot into the corner. McCaffrey now Creener. Creener with the right hand, couldn't finish it. And the rebound goes to Goldman. And Creener kind of flipped it up there rather than shot it. Creener, a guy who has some really good skills in that low post area, even has some good range when he shows it. Turnaround shot, and nothing going down for the Panthers. Nice. Good pass. Bear ends up on his backside. It's going to be, be out of bounds off of UNI. And it's going to go to Iowa. Great hustle. It, it was a, not a bad pass by McCaffrey. Now he needed to put it a little bit farther away. Watch where this pass is. And, and Creener doesn't help the, he doesn't hold off the defender. But how about the hustle by both players, especially Bear goes off. A Panther foot will come the other way. Now the shot clock does not reset. Iowa has to be cognizant of that. Now coming up on 15 seconds. Garza's back in the ball game. Getting an extended break for Cook with immediate timeout coming up under eight minutes. And there will be a foul underneath. And they'll get Brown trying to stop Bear from getting into the post area. And Brown probably the best defender for the Northern Iowa Panthers. But it's not the defensive end of the floor that Northern Iowa should be worried about offensively. They have gone stone cold. Now Iowa's starting to cool off a little bit, too. Started seven for their first 11. They've missed their last three shots. Had some good looks, too. Goldman left alone, passed it up. It's not his game. And Daly is all over green, away from the ball. Iowa doing a really good job of locating the leading scorer for the Panthers. Nothing has come easy for the true freshman A.J. Green here tonight. Nothing's come easy at all for the entire team. Just two of 16 from the floor. Nicholas Bear got his man in the air. Good passing. McCaffrey driving. McCaffrey open man. May she daily. Everything but the bottom. Iowa's doing everything they want to do offensively. They're just not making their shots. Still nothing dropping for you and I. That's Haldeman on the miss. I mean, we're in a farm state. Usually you have a drought like this, you get a telethon or some kind of federal aid. <laughs> Garza underneath. Finally, something goes through the hoop, and Luca Garza contributing to a 9-0 run right now for Iowa. Panthers just looking for something to go through the net. It's been a while. Under 15 now, stripped by Creener. Yeah, Goldman has to be stronger with the basketball. Just has to be stronger. Last court pass, Bear, three. Nicholas Bear. Timeout, UNI trying to stop the Hawkeyes. are up technically on the road in Des Moines as part of the Hy-Vee Classic. And don't forget, folks, tomorrow on BTN, catch a doubleheader of hoops. Cassius Winston leads the ninth-ranked Spartans against Green Bay. Then James Palmer, the Oscars battle Oklahoma State in South Dakota. Big Ten basketball presented by Jeep tomorrow right here on BTN and the Fox Sports app. Pentagon. In South oh, Dakota, that is a great facility. That that town, Sioux Falls, does a wonderful job, not just with that event, but with every 
major college basketball event that comes there and Oklahoma State the opponent for the Cornhuskers really gave Minnesota everything they wanted in a game toward the end of November they did that up at US Bank Stadium as kind of a dry run for the final four which will be held in Minneapolis in 2019 what was that venue like US Bank Stadium big for a basketball game <laughs> really big Massive, right and they did, did it in one corner of the end zone Pickford for three. Pickford can't stop the spell. That's 13 straight misses for UNI. And one of 10 from behind the arc. Good feed. Really good post feed by McCaffrey. McCaffrey. Still plenty of time. Iowa doing whatever they want on offense right now. Tyler Cook with the right hand. Couldn't finish. Guys are trying to tap it to himself. Picked away by Pickford. Green has been awfully quiet. And finally, A.J. Green has touch. And even though that went in, that was a difficult shot for Green. I mean, that he's going away from his strong hand and had to bring it back across his body to convert. Garza underneath, nice touch over the top of Dahl. And now if you're Northern Iowa, you're talking about having the double team cook. You may have to utilize that same strategy against Luca Garza because right now, one on one with the defender on his back, he's doing a wonderful job of playing away from contact. Garza's got nine points in this game. Cook has seven. And foul. And I think the Iowa sideline is beside themselves on that foul. You be the judge. There's a little bit of body in there. I think the emphasis will be on little. Yeah. Fran McCaffrey with a pat on the back for our official. Hey, got on you. Got a little hot there for a moment, but we're all good. You know, this is the season of caring and giving. First miss of the season for Lowhouse. Makes one out of two from the free throw line. 17 point lead right now for Iowa. Bohannon. Now Wieskamp with Lowhouse on him. And he got a little out of control. Lowhouse did a nice job. And a good job by Dahl coming in there as well. Not giving up any kind of space to Garza. He was trying to back him down. Then the dribble comes right at Garza. Dahl doing a good job of holding his ground. Watch on the bottom of your screen, then he rotates over. And when Garza doesn't vacate the area, that allowed Dahl to stay there. If Garza locate, or relocates to the short corner, the opportunity to dribble drive and get all the way to the rim might have been there for Iowa. A.J. Green with Bohannon on him. Bohannon has made it really tough on Green so far. And another turnover by UNI. That is their seventh of this first half. Cook feeds Bear from the corner. And Green pulls down the rebound. Now Green trying to feel it. Made his first. Didn't make that one. But you know what? You can live with that shot. It came in transition before the defense was set. He's certainly shown the ability to hit that shot. Just like his teammates. Just not able to convert anything offensively so far in the first half. Green is just one for five from the floor so far as Moss draws the foul. He'll pick up Lowhouse. Lowhouse with his second personal. Joins McDonald with a couple of fouls. Subs coming in for both clubs. Size with Goldman and Burhau back on the floor. And if you are Northern Iowa right now, you have to be wary of any kind of lob up toward the rim for cooking this out of bounds situation. Go outside the Moss now. A kick by Isaiah Brown. Reset the shot clock to 20. Started talking about Brown and his defensive prowess a few possessions ago. You know, in the Missouri Valley Conference tournament a season ago against Evansville, Brown was able to hold Ryan Taylor, averaged 22 points per ball game at Evansville, to only one basket in that ball game. Brown, native of Flower Mound, Texas. Garza. Too strong on that shot off the heel. Considering that Northern Iowa is just 3 for 20 from the floor in this game, they're still only down 17 points. Rather remarkable. 
Yeah. And you talked about Bohannon and A.J. Green taking his high school team out. I tell you what, Bohannon is really locking down defensively on the freshman Green. Bohannon had 44 in his final high school game. Brown for three. And there'll be a foul on Iowa on a push off. And Bohannon's done a really nice job on Green. It's going to stay on this end of the floor. Iowa out front, under four to play in the first half. Gotta love Iowa geography. It's a high B classic. Based here in Des Moines, the four schools aim Cedar Falls, Iowa City, and Drake, of course, from Des Moines. Sean, you're from just outside of Des Moines? Yeah, we always used to call Des Moines the gateway to Altoona, which is just to the east. <laughs> now it used to be kind of out in the country, Jeff, and now it's essentially become a suburb. My wife is not from here, around here, and when I took her back the first time, and we had, you know, more than one stoplight, I kept saying how big the city was, and like she does usually, looked at me like I had three heads. <laughs> It's really neat that the four schools have been able to come together here in Des Moines for the last few years. Of course, Iowa, Northern Iowa used to do the home home for a number of years. Nice follow. But wouldn't go down, and now a foul on Goldman. He's kind of got locked up there with Tyler Cook. Had an opportunity for a great follow, but just couldn't finish it. And that just kind of sums up the first 17 minutes of clock action for the Panthers. I mean, you get an opportunity for an an easy stick back, nice job by Goldman of staying active, but it rolls off and then kind of out of frustration, it's compounded with a foul. Cook goes to the line. Cook three out of four from the free throw stripe so far. And make it four out of his first five. He's got eight points. He continues to just be a monster this year, not only in Big Ten conference play, but the out of conference as well, averaging a double-double over his last couple of ball games. And he's just 14 points shy. He came in just 14 points shy of a thousand in his career. It's like he's going to get that and then some this evening. The largest lead of the game for Iowa. 19 points. And now some pressure defensively from the Hawkeyes. And look at how much time it forced Northern Iowa to burn. It's coming up with half the shot clock has evaporated. They have yet to penetrate the three-point arc. Showing their length as well. They go underneath Burhal. Oh, that one falls down finally. He needed it. Nice execution by Northern Iowa. They reversed the basketball and were able to find a little gap along the far baseline here. But it came off ball reversal. Started with a skip pass from Green to get it from the left to the right side of the floor. Burhal's first points of the evening. They go down oh. low. Tough look inside. Wees camp. Shows some emotion as it went down, too. Well, he ducked in, I mean, and he had all the real estate to himself and a good conversion by the freshman. Thought it was going to get stuck on the heel there for a moment. I mean, Jordan Bohannon has done a fantastic job defensively against A.J. Green. That's not going to end well. Went off the backboard. It's going to stay with... Northern Iowa, go back to Joe Wieskamp and what he was able to do underneath. Watch the duck in. He wanted the and one, but it looked like Northern Iowa did a pretty good job of maintaining verticality, but he did his work early there, Jeff, as he was able to get duck right in, get the defender on his back, and Wieskamp very efficient in putting up those seven first half points. Wieskamp, talented freshman out of Muscatine. State of Iowa's all-time leading scorer, over 2,300 points, was the player of the year in the state twice before showing up at Iowa City. The lob to Burhau. They executed that perfectly. That's kind of what I expected a few possessions ago from Iowa trying to utilize Cook, but here it's Burhau able to get over the top, and Cook is very fortunate he wasn't caught with a swing move. Cook on the follow that time on the miss by Wieskamp. What I mean by that swim move is that he had Burhau on his back and it looked like he might have extended that inside arm. The officials didn't catch it. He's able to snake around and avoid the contact with the tipping. Green, deep three. And Bohanna with a rebound. Underneath, Garza. And a travel on Luca Garza. He just kind of came out from underneath him. Folks, coming up next, State Farm Halftime Report. Dave Revson, and Jess Settles, Dion Thomas standing by in our Chicago studio. Talking about a very busy day in the Big Ten Conference. 
Busy weekend of hoops. Last few tune-ups before conference play begins again at the end of the month after the holidays. Nice help there till Bohannon was able to recover on green. And the three just will not fall at all for Northern Iowa. One for 14 in this first half. Garza. One on three win. Perfect move by Luca Garza. How about the catch by Garza? That pass had a little loft under it. He was able to go up and corral it. Most importantly, Jeff, he went after it with two hands. He didn't try to make the fancy play. He made the solid play and is rewarded. He and Cook have combined for 22 points, 11 apiece. Nice feed underneath. Wees camp thought he had a steal. Instead, it's a foul. Some free throws coming for Shandon Goldman. Here's the great catch. And look, he corrals it with two hands. Once the ball was deflected, Jeff, and it went down below his waist, he didn't try to use that rhythm dribble. He got down, got it with two hands, got it right up into the chin position in the conversion. Garza saw the 11 points there. He entered tonight's game having made just three of his last 16 shots in his last two games. Tough against Michigan State was one out of 10. His two of six against Iowa State nine days ago. Hawkeyes had a little break for finals. Last game was on the 6th. Well, you, you mentioned his struggles over the last couple of games, but it also points out how well he had played offensively in the games leading up to that, because even with that little bit of a struggle, Garza came into his ball game, Jeff, shooting 51% from the floor. And again, 12 and nearly five rebounds. Under a minute to play, Ball Hannon. Knocks down another three. Ball Hannon with six first half points. But his greatest contribution has been on this end of the floor, absolutely locking down A.J. Green, the leading scorer for the Panthers. A.J. Green stuck on just two points and one of six. Good help defense by Garza. I mean, they are locked in on this end. Isaiah Brown finally with a three there. Fran McCaffrey is livid right now. They did such a nice job of locking down very quickly. But they end up giving up the three-pointer anyway. Folks, now let's take a look at this message from ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire and the official hiring partner of the Big Ten Conference. Hiring delays were causing work to pile up. That's not smart. But you know what is smart? Using ZipRecruiter. They find people with the right skills, education, and experience for my job and actively invite them to apply. So I got qualified candidates fast. No wonder ZipRecruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S. ZipRecruiter, official hiring partner of the Big Ten Conference. Try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Big Ten. 20-point lead for the Hawkeyes right now. Fran McCaffrey saw a little bit of a breakdown in their defense on that last possession, but, boy, they locked down the Panthers tonight. And regardless of whether it has been straight-up man-to-man, -man, they've mixed it up with a little bit of zone defense. The one constant has been the communication on the defensive end of the floor, witnessed by the defensive stats that you see there, but it has started with George Bohannon and him answering the challenge against A.J. Green, and in the first 20 minutes, he has answered that challenge more than admirably. Shot clock is off. Nicholas Bear trying to find some help. Garza, tough catch, and he's fouled. He'll go to the line with four and a half seconds to go in this first half. A chance to give the Hawkeyes 40 points at least. Garza had a nice first half, 11 points on five of nine. You know, over the course of 16 minutes, he played just 16 minutes the entire game against Iowa State last time out. That's the first shot. And this is an area, you know, usually people talk about big guys not being excellent foul shooters. This young man is an exception to that rule. 87% from the line prior to that offense. That's one out of two. Garza has missed just five free throws on the season. You see Daly in for defensive purposes. Pickford with a tough catch. He's got to get going. Pickford for three. Off the rim, and that is how we will go to halftime. Iowa putting on a clinic defensively so far, Sean. Doing a nice job of setting the tone on that end of the floor early on. 
not allowing Northern Iowa to get any kind of comfort level on the offensive end of the floor. And then defensively, they've been able to transfer into the offensive end of the floor, playing confidently in the first 20 minutes on both ends. Garza and Cook combined for 23 of the 39. We've got the State Farm halftime report coming up in just a moment. Stick with us in Des Moines. enjoying a 21 point lead at the half about ready to get our second half started high v classic the final of these couple of games already that is the brother of jordan bohannon matt bohannon graduate of northern iowa making a couple of buckets in the three-point shooting contest there's the reaction on the last miss come on man had you missed that was for some real money come on matt bohannon how about some gratitude i know right yeah Got him some burgers and some IV gift cards and stuff, along with Sean Morris, Jeff Levering with you. Matt Bohannon's brother, however, Jordan, did an outstanding job defensively on A.J. Green. As did the entire Iowa Hawkeye squad, jumping on Northern Iowa on the defensive end of the floor, holding the Panthers to 21% shooting, and a big reason for that was the individual effort of Jordan Bohannon. We watched him throughout this whole sequence. We watched him ball you man, locating Green, being there on the catch, coming through a little bit of contact, and even with the chance of another ball reversal, Bohanna was going to take that away. Known as a three-point shooter, knocked down two of two, but so far this evening, far and away, his biggest contribution has been on the defensive end of the floor for the Iowa Hawkeyes. 18 points allowed, fewest all season in any half. And for Fran McCaffrey, very pleased with what he's seen on the defensive end. Again, just 6 out of 28, 21% for Northern Iowa in the first half, and Bohanna picks up a quick foul, a little cheap foul that time. Where did they get Garza? Well, they did get Garza. It looked like Bohanna was going to get called with a foul, just trying to poke his hand in there, but they gave it to Garza. It's his second. A.J. Green had just two points in that first half, one of six. And the one he hit was a difficult shot going to his left. And it was out of bounds off of Iowa. Nearly forced a turnover. And a really difficult inbounds right here for the Northern Iowa Panthers. He can't run the, he cannot run the baseline. Very difficult angle from which to inbound. 15 seconds on that shot clock at the time of the, the push. Jay Green trying to get something going. Deep three that time rimmed in and out. Rebound goes to Tyler Cook. Cook had 11 in the first half. 11 points, that is, as Wee's camp. The hand in his face buried it. Well, he did his work early, Jeff, getting his feet set while the pass was in the air because it took a while for that pass to get over there, but because Wieskamp caught it in a basketball position, he was getting, able to get up into the shooting pocket. The third in double figures for Iowa. Wieskamp now with 10, and that was over the top of his former AAU teammates in sixth grade, A.J. Green. Low house looking for somebody. Green is that man with six to shoot, runs into trouble. Burhau now, and Burhau short, offensive rebound, the put back good by McDonald. McDonald had quality minutes when he was on the floor, picked up two fouls and didn't have a lot of time on the floor in that first half as Moss goes right at him. McDonald and Moss bang knees there. We'll go back to Wieskamp though first. Watch Wieskamp how he catches the ball. His knees were bent. Even though he had to kind of reach off to the side to catch it and get into the shooting position, his feet were set. His knees were bent. The pass was in the air. He was ready to catch and shoot. Quite the resume for the youngster out of Muscatine High School. Got a half an hour away from Iowa City, out to the east. And that face that you saw on the picture, I mean, it doesn't change for Joe. Whether he is 10 for 10 from the floor or if he's 0 for 10, he's, his facial expressions and his demeanor does not change. McDonald goes to the bench with three fouls. Again, he and Moss collided knees on that drive. We've seen this throughout the course of the game on a made free throw situation. It's given Iowa the opportunity to kind of extend themselves defensively and force Northern Iowa to burn a lot of clock just getting the ball up the floor. 24 point lead, the largest of the game for the Hawkeyes. House with five to shoot. Green's got to go. Green couldn't hit the shot. Ball Hannon 
was flying by. A.J. Green can't buy a bucket right now. But a pretty good show by Garza as well to give him something to shoot over the top of. An offensive foul on Tyler Cook. Didn't allow his teammate to get by him before the screen. Freedom of movement. Seen a lot of those kind of fouls the first couple of months of the season. Yeah, and if you're the person receiving the screen, Jeff, you have to wait for your teammate, in this case Cook, to get set before you start moving. They've started a number of years ago really emphasizing you can't allow those kind of physical interchanges. Work in the perimeter game. You and I, Brown, going inside now. And a nice move by Goldman. And a good job by Goldman of getting set, getting himself situated, because that pass took him all the way underneath the basket. He needed that dribble to create some space. Double over to Cook. Someone's open. Wieskamp on a tough pass from Moss. And Garza was fouled by Goodman. Uh, Goldman, I should say. Go back to the, the footwork from the junior, Shandon Goldman. Nice job, because that pass took him underneath. Now watch, he needed that dribble, Jeff, to clear himself of the backboard because the pass led him toward the baseline, but he had the presence of mind to understand his location on the floor and utilize that little rhythm dribble to clear some space. Native of Evansville, Arkansas. Went to UALR for a season. Nice team defense. Really good job, and that forced another walk. They, we talked about the fact that they were going to run double teams at Cook. They did that. They might have to emphasize that with Garza, and they show you right. That's a good, strong double team. When Burhau came down there, there was no hesitation. He came, it located the vision of Garza, and he shuffled his feet. Northern Iowa was turning the ball over a lot in that first half, and Burhau is called on a bad screen as well. That's their eighth turnover, but you're seeing Iowa start to turn it over a little bit too. Defensive intensity starting to pick up for you and I. Burhau just picked up his second personal. You know, Burhau giving up a lot of size to Cook. Let's see if Iowa wants to try to take advantage of that and isolate Cook. Swinging around to Moss. Cook was asking for an alley-oop. Wasn't there. Garza, top of the key three. Oh, friendly on the roll and a foul underneath. So Garza knocks down the triple. That was a friendly roll, to say the least. I mean, watch this. It goes up there softly, and then it dies like my career aspirations, but yet <laughs> finds the bottom of the well. I bet you're going to give, like, a golf analogy or something. I know nothing about golf. Well, I mean. The windmill hole and putt-putt, that's all I know. <laughs> Maybe a cycling reference, no? No. Okay. But, but don't get me started. This is a family show. <laughs> Isaiah Moss underneath. There it is, one of the best in the land. Throwing it down. Nice delivery. He's one away from a thousand points as well. That three by Lowhouse, way off the mark. And the rebound by Cook. Moss now for three. Nice block out. Really good job by Northern Iowa. Isaiah Brown blocked Wieskamp for about 30 seconds on that one. And a foul on Tyler Cook. Let's go back to Tyler Cook. And it is our BTN standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Tyler Cook answering the musical question, if I leave here tomorrow, would you still remember me? The answer is yes. Fly on Freebird. The Hawkeye, Tyler Cook, sending it in for our Auto Owners BTN standout. I have no response, Sean. That was terrific. <laughs> I think people will remember him after that. Oh, they better. The rim will. If the rim is capable of memory, which I don't think it is, being it's an inanimate object, but you know what I mean. That one would try and forget. That was a very powerful exchange. But Cook does that, that's for sure. Brown knocks down the triple, the shot clock winding down. Isaiah Brown. Averaging... Just about eight points a ball game. And a career high 20 against Illinois State last year. Brown doing nice defensive work on Moss, too. Wieskamp looking for Garza. Now Wieskamp around the edge. Cross court pass. Ball headed. And Garza trying to tap it to himself. Garza. And Cook with a putback. He's over 1,000. And Garza kept that alive because. When the shot came from the far corner, Garza did his work. He got the 
defender from Northern Iowa on his hip. Even though he wasn't able to convert, he kept it alive. So Cook was able to come in and clean it up. Really impressive on the offensive glass on that possession by Iowa. Burhau trying to drive. Wieskamp fouled him, and Burhau's going to go to the line. Chance for a three-point play. Tyler Cook, he's over 1,000 in his career. These have been impressive. 11 rebounds last time out for the Hawkeyes. Seven of the offensive variety, but he can send it in with authority or clean up the mess of his team, and as he does right there. You always try. Tyler Cook with another double-double. He's averaged a double-double his last three ball games. I'm doing a little bit of everything today here, Sean. And how about the offensive efficiency? You mentioned it. 15 points for Tyler Cook. Five of six from the floor. Getting it done from the foul line. Five of six. Also leading his team in assists. Or tied it, rather, at four. Showing you his offensive versatility. He had 11 rebounds last time out versus Iowa State. Seven of the offensive variety. Picking up right where he left off here this evening. Very efficient, as you mentioned. Five out of six from the floor. His 12th career double-double, his third this season, as Burhau converts on the three-point play. Just 28 points for Northern Iowa in this contest. Iowa has put the clamps down. You want to say talons, then you could say that too. Oh, nice. And Northern Iowa trying to utilize his own defense here to maybe stem a little bit of the offensive flow. But how about the delivery for Greener and an excellent Dive by Cook. Really good execution against that 2-3. The feed from Creener, perfect. Cook, all he had to do was catch and elevate. Cook now with 17 to lead all scorers as Brown rimmed in and out. Three-point shooting woes continue for UNI. Just three out of 20 in this game. Bear trying to work around the screen. Cook. Looking for somebody. Now it's Bohannon. Ten to shoot. Bohannon nearly lost it. Gets it over to Moss. Got to go now. Three on the shot clock. Isaiah Moss with a great drive. Good job by Moss of keeping the dribble alive. And you saw a little bit of fatigue right there by Northern Iowa as a couple of Panthers got out of their stance. Inside. Lowhouse with a good drive. Finish with the left hand. Nice rip through there by Lojas. Caught it, ripped it through, and able to turn the corner. Great spacing from Iowa on the offensive end all night long. Moss, deep three. Isaiah off the front of the rim. 25-point lead for the Hawkeyes. In this rivalry game, last 14 times these two teams have played, they've split seven and seven. Goldman, a deep three. Goldman way off the mark on that one. That kind of looked like Oscar Goldman shooting that one. <laughs> I know that reference. Can't sneak that one by me, Sean. Creener doing a really good job of demanding the ball. Double is there, Bohannon, that's a deep three. And Nicholas Bear with an offensive rebound just kind of snuck his way on the baseline to go get it. And you can see the depth of Iowa has started to wear down Northern Iowa a little bit, especially along that front line. Cook nice. got his man in the air. Now Bohannon wide open in the corner. Not going to miss two in a row. Bohannon with nine. A good shot fake by Cook to create some space and then not taking that extra dribble, potentially drawing a charge. Didn't see that part of his game a lot last year. Big improvement off the heel from Burhau. And going the other way, the Hawkeyes. A rare turnover. But Bohan in right place, right time. That's the way he's played all night long. Bear, open look. And Burhau with the board. 58 to 30. Under 12 to play in this ball game. Saw Iowa State take down Drake earlier. Drake put a scare into the Cyclones, though, that's for sure. Brown, a deep three. NBA range. Isaiah Brown with a three. A timeout called. Iowa still in command in this High V Classic at Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. Back in a bit. 
33 in Des Moines, part of the High V Big Four Classic at Wells Fargo Arena. How about for you, Sean, our State Farm assists of the game? Not one, but two. Nice job by Creener making himself available. Tyler Cook delivers offensively here, but here he's the one making the pass. Shot big, really good job of not dribbling into contact, allowing Bo Hannon to get his feet set in the corner. And this is the season of giving, and Iowa has done that extremely well tonight. 20 made, 21 made field goals for the Hawkeyes, 13 coming via the assist. Five of those from Tyler Cook to lead all Hawkeyes. Isaiah Moss with four. Nobody else with more than one. Cook leading all scores with 17. Garza with 15. And Wieskamp with 10. Connor McCaffrey on the floor now. Now Macy Daly. And he knocks down a jumper. Macy Daly in the stat column. His first bucket of the evening. Go along with a steal. Pure shooter if he can really get it going. Well, I was just doing such a good job defensively here. Did not let the intensity go down despite what the score is. They force yet another turnover. That is the tenth. You see a lot of teams across the country they get up as large as Iowa is right now 27 points Macy Daly again he's starting to feel it but you see sometimes the gas pedal be kind of eased off a little bit but not tonight with Iowa especially on the defensive end that, that thing can usually go a little bit south on you but that has not been the case I mean Iowa has really been locked in essentially since the opening tip defensively Goldman trying to drive had it altered by Creener another rebound by Cook. Cook with 13 boards. Connor McCaffrey, open man. Macy Daly. Not three in a row. He was stuck on two straight. Good looking shot, though. The ball hit by Green, but he's fouled on his way to the hoop. Green has been totally held in check in this ballgame by that Hawkeyes defense. Nearly up by 30 are the Hawkeyes here in the morning. BTN is brought to you by State Farm, here to help life go right. Talk to State Farm today. The beautiful Capitol building in downtown Des Moines. It's my first time in the city of Des Moines. I was really impressed driving in last night and how spectacular the Capitol building is. And, and the job that has been done in the downtown area of Des Moines, just a complete revitalization. And I think the city of Des Moines is really a hidden gem, not just in the Midwest, but nationally. Talked about it earlier, they will be hosting a NCAA tournament regional this year. Uh, hosted a couple of years ago as well, right here at the Wells Fargo Arena. Really, really neat facilities. You see Tyler Cook on the bench, kind of grabbing at his lower right leg. His shin, you know, a couple of games ago, Juwan Morgan for Indiana also inadvertently got kicked in the shin and had to come out of the ball game as well. Turnover, McCaffrey with a tough pass inside to Creener. Rare mistake by McCaffrey, who had almost a four to one assist short. turnover ratio. Alderman with short on the three. Lowhouse. Nice. Really good job by Lowhouse of understanding. Don't take that extra dribble. Not dribbling into a charge, but a potential shot block. Came under control. Two foot jump stop. Nice job. Totally different player than Dad Brad. Also about a foot shorter. Greener inside. Garza got locked up by Lowhouse. And you mentioned Brad Lowhouse, Jeff. He was really one of the first guys at seven feet to kind of trail plays and knock down threes. You know, his first three years in Iowa City, you know, didn't really get a whole lot of, of playing time consistently. But in his last year, as the three-point shot really started to take on greater significance, Lohas found himself not in a great niche, not just at the collegiate level, but partly that into an extensive professional career as well. 12 years in the NBA, a lot of seasons with the Milwaukee Bucks. Featured on the video game NBA Jam. Oh, there you go. I quit after Atari, so it's Pong <laughs> as far as I go. Pong and Tank? Yes, exactly. All right. Winzine on the floor. Senior Miles Winzine. Lowhouse for three. Lowhouse fills it up. Why Lowhouse? Nice little stretch. 
11 points for the senior. He's battled injuries throughout the course of his career. A couple of seasons ago, had some pretty significant ankle problems. Forced to red shirt. Nice move inside by Garza. He's back in the score column. Garza now with 17. Matches Tyler Cook. Zone defense this time. Winzine trying to go underneath. Green, a nice finish by Miles Winzine. Nice job of using that rim to shield him of the shot blocking presence of Kreener who's trying to come from the back side. Kreener's got so much length. 7-3 with his wingspan. There's Garza for three, a little short. Came off his hand kind of funny. That was more of a knuckleball. Green running into bodies. Goldman now for three. Shandon Goldman, now they're starting to fall a little bit for Northern Iowa. Maybe a little too late to try and get back into this ball game, but it is a 19-point contest and a 10-2 run for the Panthers. Caffrey, Creener, Bear. Macy Daly now. Swing it right on around, and Macy Daly having a nice night. Good job of moving the ball on the perimeter from side to side. And again, as we've said throughout the course of the evening, just a really solid utilization of spacing by the Iowa Hawkeyes offensive. Daly with seven points underneath Low House, trying to find the man, open man. There's Haldeman. Haldeman couldn't hit it. And Garza pulls down another rebound. Those are the looks you want if you're Northern Iowa. Again, Macy Daly. Short on that shot. A really good job of running the secondary break by Iowa, spreading the floor, getting it to Daly, recognizing the hot hand, just not able to convert there. Winzine from the wing. Too strong. McCaffrey pulls it in. Starting to see some really good things from Iowa. They've got a easy-ish schedule coming up after the finals, which they just completed, Western Carolina, Savannah State, and Bryant before returning back to Big Ten play against Purdue. Garza up and under, and a foul underneath. Now get Winzine. Iowa comfortably in front, just over six to play in the morning. On a shocking season finale of Fansville. 67-43 here in Des Moines at Wells Fargo Arena. Sean, did you catch any of these parachuting gift cards? The camera guy did. They're dropping bricks on my head. Apparently, I missed the memo. Viking coming away with something. Oh, uh, make sure you put that on the 1099, Jeff. Yeah, I think you're going to have to claim that one. Sorry. That's too bad. Graham McCaffrey in Iowa, though. Man, they are running hot. They talk about their schedule that's coming up. Western Carolina, Savannah State, Bryan, and then you get into the teeth of conference play, and there are no gimmies in the Big Ten anymore, especially when you start at Purdue. Inside and a nice move and a finish by Bear. Savannah State, the Tigers continuing their Steve Miller go on, take the money and run tour. Also not necessarily the stoutest defensive team that Iowa may face this year. They gave up 90 points in the first half to the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State earlier this week. Gave up 101 to Wisconsin on Thursday. First time that they had eclipsed 100 points at Cole Center. And Bear thought he had the block. Might have been a foul before that on Riley Till. Wisconsin hadn't put up 100 points at the Cole Center since Frank Kaminsky did it against North Dakota State in 2013. Just the second time ever 100 points at the Cole Center. That was Savannah State. They like to shoot threes. Oh, don't force them up now. 45 a game. Winzine with his first free throw miss of the year. Stack guy handed me a shoot that said he's 12 for 12 from the free throw line this year. That's on you, Mike. If we could only control such things. He made that one. We'd have no control over this. People say, oh my gosh, he's oh, yeah. perfect from the free throw line. He's a perfect field goal kicker. Did nothing to do with it. I've always thought you had that kind of juice, Jeff. No, really no, no. I'm in the wrong business if I do. McCaffrey threw it away. 
Folks, when the action ends, Big Show takes over. Highlights from around the conference, post-game reactions straight from the arena, in-depth expert analysis as well. It's the Big Show. It's coming up after the game right here on BTN. Lots to talk about on a busy day in the Big Ten Conference. Iowa number 22 in the country coming into this one. Got by Lohaus. He's had a really nice second half. Yeah, he's been the certainly the bright offensive spot for the Panthers in Northern Iowa, especially with their leading score. The only guy coming into the ball game averaging double digits, freshman A.J. Green, held completely in check, primarily because of the play of Jordan Bohannon. Daly lost it. Trying to get it over to Bear, and Bear commits the foul on Lowhouse. 23-point lead right now for Iowa. And again, we mentioned the schedule that's coming up. Purdue, Nebraska, Northwestern. Two of the first three games when you get back into conference play on January 3rd on the road. All games you'll be able to see on BTN. But you go up and down the conference, Sean, and it is... It is a bear, no doubt about it. There's not an easy game in there. The teams that have been down in the past are better. And you also have eliminated, not completely, but certainly to a fair degree, any kind of the scheduling quirks that might have been kind of hurt a team like Nebraska a year ago because with the addition of two extra conference games, now the opportunity to have a, a complete round robin, especially if you're a team looking to build your resume with those two extra games, chances are one of those might be against the team that's above you in the standings. Riley Till called for a travel a turnover with 4.33 to go. Till on the floor getting some time late. Conference play is going to be a lot of fun once the new year gets here. And again, you got a nice little tease of it as well. At the end of November, beginning of December, it's, it's kind of that, all right, here's a weekend worth of conference play. Let's see what you do. See where you are. Make your adjustments and then go from there over the month of December. And I, I believe that for the Big Ten as a conference, Jeff, last year, four teams advanced to the NCAA tournament. I'm going to be surprised if that doesn't at least double to eight because of what the conference has been able to do in their non-conference slate and the fact that the depth and the quality of wins and the opportunity to build your resume throughout the course of the season is going to be enhanced. Six teams ranked in the Big Ten Conference right now, 10 receiving votes. It is really impressive so far. Michigan escaped Western Michigan earlier today. Great game seen right here on BTN. Talk about an improvement defensively. Remade program defensively. Goldman, turnaround. Wow, good shot by Shandon Goldman. Tough shot because Bear did a pretty good job of keeping him in front and forcing a difficult shot by Goldman. Back under 20 points, the deficit for Northern Iowa now. 19 is the lead for Iowa. It's a 7 0 run for the Panthers. Daly going around the screen. Daly inside. Cleaner finishes it off. Really good utilization of the misdirection dribble by Daly. He dribbles with his stronger left hand. All the white jerseys have to flow accordingly. Then he kicks it back to Creener. Perfect look. Creener tapped it away with that 7-3 wingspan. Finally gives Macy Daly a high five for that last feed. Better late than never. Mm -hmm. Pickford trying to find the open man. It ends up right at our feet at the table. And Iowa in total. All right, thanks, Dave. 21-point lead. 22nd-ranked Iowa Hawkeyes over Northern Iowa. Mentioned a couple of moments ago how good the Big Ten Conference has been nationally. Six teams in that top 25 right now. And their counterpart, the ACC, with six teams in the current top 25. Remember, in the Big Ten ACC Challenge, those games were split evenly as well at 7-7. Lowhouse fouled on his drive. Big Ten winning the Gavit games for the first time. This is the fourth year the Gavit games have gone on against the Big East Conference. Those two conferences had split for the first three years. The first time the Big Ten had won. And again, you mentioned the ACC Big Ten Challenge, which I think is great for both of the, the guaranteed games with the Big East Conference and the Big Ten Conference. It, it's a nice barometer of where you are, especially early on in the season. Now, you and I love it because we watch a lot of basketball and, you know, we're not taking wins or losses. Now, a lot of the coaches, <laughs> they may not wish that they had all of those 
tough opponents, but you hit it right on the head. You have to play somebody and get a good barometer while the stakes are still relatively low. But the most important thing that I think the casual fan has to remember that a win or loss, regardless of the quality, counts the same in November as it does in March. Greener, nice turnaround with the right hand. Right. Yes, it's not in conference, which yeah, again, there's the, the whole new net rankings and all that. We don't necessarily need to dive into all those, but uh, at the same time, a loss is a loss. And if you want to pile up wins, whether they're by 10 points or more or whatever, a W is a W is a W. Well, you know, you've been around me long enough that I have to keep things simple, Jeff. And I don't care what kind of formula you use or algorithm, it comes down to three things. Who'd you play? Where'd you play him? How'd you do? Mm -hmm. You can slice, dice it, put in a blender all you want. Those three components are at the core. Creener's going to go to the line and shoot a couple of free throws. See Tyler Cook there, probably done for the rest of the day. Double-double for Cook with 17 points and 13 rebounds. He eclipsed the 1,000-point mark tonight. How about the job that young man Jordan Bohannon did defensively? He was stellar, setting the tone on that defensive end of the floor right from the opening tip. Remember, it was the first or second possession that he was denying between the half-court line and the three-point line. Got a deflection. Northern Iowa, especially in the first 20 minutes, not able to get into any kind of offensive rhythm, especially their freshman leading scorer, A.J. Green. There were some, some nice articles written uh, talking about this matchup and about the Hy-Vee Classic, and we talked about it earlier today as well. Jordan Bohan went for 44 points in his final high school game ever and a chance to play here in the state championship game. But it was A.J. Green that knocked down a three at the buzzer that prohibited him from doing that. He had not talked to A.J. Green since. So what does he do today in his next opportunity to play against him? He locks him down. A.J. Green today had just two points and was one of eight from the floor. But there was, is a bright future for that young man. You know, A.J. Green came in much ballyhooed and deservedly so out of Cedar Falls High School. Look, he's a true freshman. There's a big difference between being a guy in your first third of a season at the major college level as A.J. Green is, and you see what the experience that Jordan Bohannon's been able to gather what that has paid for him, not just offensively, but today, weirdly apparent defensively. Austin Ash trying to convert as he's in the ball game. Unable to do so at the free throw line. Out of bounds, it's off of Northern Iowa, and it will go to Iowa. More subs coming in as Lowhouse heads to the bench. He had a very nice second half. The majority of his points came in this second period. Lowhouse finishes with 15, 11 of those in the second half. Hobbs on the floor with Ash and Till. And the youngest bear. Bench would have exploded if that one would have gone down for Nicholas, playing in just his second game this year. Winzine trying to drive, finds the open man. Nice feed to Pickford. And nice recovery because he was in the air. He wanted to shoot it. The ball got deflected, but he's able to corral it and get it to his teammate before he hit the floor. Ash for three. Austin Ash out of baby. Knocks down the triple, trying to get this Des Moines crowd fired up. Winzine with a layup on the other end. And Iowa is going to run the clock down. That's a great moment for a kid like Austin Ash. Works his tail off, running scout offense and scout defense. And Austin Ash is going to hang on to it and enjoy this win for the Hawkeyes. They were great locking down this Northern Iowa team defensively. And the second consecutive win by the Iowa Hawkeyes versus an in-state rival about 10 days ago against the Iowa State Cyclones, who we saw in action earlier this evening, and then following up against Northern Iowa. But Iowa set the tone on the defensive end of the floor, and it certainly paid dividends. Let's take a look one more time at Austin Ash on this three. Just watch the bench and their reaction as Ash knocks it down. The bench goes nuts. Austin Ash, yeah, feel it. Why not, right? How many opportunities are you going to have to knock down a three in the last High V Classic game? And there's a whole lot to be said about genuine enthusiasm that's not contrived. That's a wonderful example of genuine enthusiasm. 
Great day today for the Iowa Hawkeyes as they take down Northern Iowa. Final score 77 54 as part of this High Classic in this great state of Iowa. That's going to do it for us from Des Moines. For Sean Morris and our entire crew, I'm Jeff Lettering saying so long. Stick around. The big show coming up next right here on BTN.